Here we are continuing with our refined painting layer. Same old stuff. It's good to check your brush settings. Always knowing why it's working the way it's working. And I'm just using option over and over again to steal colors. I'm not sure why it's not seeming uh, pressure sensitive right now. So let me check that. There we go. Sometimes you can lose your connection with your tablet. And so if a tool's not working right, you just kind of remind it. If you need to, you can restart Photoshop and restart it or shut it down and restart it. Let me get that ear in there. Okay, just a few more things on the face, kind of figuring out my level of finish that I want to bring to the rest of it, both for this layer and for the werewolf layer. Because why am I doing Where's Waldo at all if I don't get to do a werewolf? Remember, each time you use one of these colors, you're creating a new color because of the, the opacity difference. So 70% of the orange with, or 50% of the orange with 50% of the blue with 50% of the skin tone gives you a new color you can steal. And then you use 50% of that. So it's, it's blending as you go, but still leaving a nice texture. that doesn't feel digitally created, you know, because it's made with your labor, and your hatch marks, your brush strokes. And maybe you want to use the smudge tool. Maybe you want to use Gaussian blur to get rid of that surface. That would be kind of like academic painting, using a fan brush to smooth everything out in traditional that's up to you. I just want you to see all of these options that are there. But it's much easier to soften something that's hard and distinct than it is to sharpen something that's soft. So I can show you a quick example of that. Let's take this refined paint layer. I'll make a duplicate of it. And I'll just, like I did to change Duotone hard edge coloring to Duotone soft edge, I'll go to Blur Gaussian Blur under Filter. And I'll just soften it all. And it, it evens it out. Right? And I could use a combination of that with what's underneath. But I tend to like the more texture and sharper. You could also use the Blur tool. You could also try the Sharpen tool. So it's a little less, less even. And in my experience, a little less useful than the blur tool is. But I always think it's easier to, to soften an edge than to reestablish a hard edge once you've lost it. This will be my last video for today's class. So when we come back after the weekend, what I want to do is be able to just finish off the refined paint and turn something in by deadline, right? Next class is the deadline for it. Trying to have a finish that demonstrates everything. So that doesn't mean I couldn't go in and do a lot more. I wanted to make this one of my portfolio projects. 
So I fully realize we don't have a ton of time to really perfect it without working outside of class. And that's why an A is an A, right? It goes above expectations. But to encourage you to really kind of experiment and push what you can do with digital painting, I'm not expecting fully finished projects to be turned in. You can get full credit for this as long as it just demonstrates the different things we're trying to, to know about it. So kind of your own colors, your own brushes, the difference between your underpainting you know, shape painting, pretty opaque, get rid of the, the empty space layer and then the refined paint layer, which is less opaque, more blended. And remember, I've got those slides to show you different examples of digital painting, different past student examples. Lots of techniques you can explore beyond just what I'm showing you in this demo. A lot of the artists that you presented on have their own ways of dealing with digital painting to augment their work, mix it with other practices. These are all meant to be inspiring for, to you for your final project. Some of that green in there, that orange. Play with the hairline a bit. Softening and feathering endlessly and into eternity. So note how much work this is for you and how much easier it is to do that work and be interested in it when you are happy with what your objective is, right? And then carry that lesson into your conceptual final. You wanna take enough time figuring out your idea and what you wanna do, kind of sketching it out, thinking about it, so that when you're in the labor intensive parts of it, you know you're working towards something that's worthwhile, not just to get the assignment grade or to get it finished, but something for your own portfolio. And this is something that's gonna, your final project will be something that's printed by everyone and then graded by class critique. So if any of you are in that position where you pick something for the digital painting just because, and now you're spending a lot of time working on it, 
just because digital painting takes a lot of work. And that's something to remember before your final project. Like, don't be, don't rush into it. Really choose the best approach. You can use some of those shadow tones now into the reds of the hat. You can put some random colors in there. It'll get there. And then the neck. Take care. We're almost ready to move on. Trying to work in more of this green and purple. It's your painting. You can make whatever you want to work to work. Just make sure you're not completely ignoring any area. Man, the face is so much more fun than the neck. So we'll get to it. Texture on the lips. Remember, it's always about highlights and shadows. And most of what you're going to be painting with are just colorful grays, chromatic grays. When you lose an edge, you have to reestablish it. Just like you would in traditional paint. Right now I can take the lessons I've learned from the face and then apply them to the neck to hopefully make it go a little bit faster because I don't have to kind of experiment towards a finish anymore. I'm just trying to make it match with the finish of the face. I already have kind of all the colors mixed. I just have to, to layer them in. And it's nice when you just have a photo to try to match. But then I think it can be even more fun just to, to go off with your own version. And that's what the werewolf layer will be like, which I'm hoping to do next class. But I've got myself covered. I have something to turn in that utilizes all of these techniques. yet still more refined painting. 